me, all the powers that have been against you shall be afraid of you in 2015. Let's welcome the man that God has been using. It has not been easy. When he entered, he said, I'm not going to pray through her. I'm not going to preach through her. I said, if you don't do it, you have killed me. I said, if you don't do it, don't bring, don't ever go home thinking that you have succeeded. If you must preach, that's why you came. Even if you finish everything in you, we will send you back dry. Mama at home will feed you back. Your wife knows how to listen. Bring you back. Praise Our daddy, Dr. Apoki. Bless you, daddy. Thank you, sir. Touch your feet, sir. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you. And we bless your name. And we worship you. And we glorify your name. Lord, I have come here to speak to my brethren. I thank you that we are mostly Africans here. Lord, that our lives will never be the same again. As black people, we have been dominated for several years. This is our turn to dominate. Our children will not suffer the indignities we have suffered. Amen. Our children will stand head and shoulders with their contemporaries. Yes, they will excel. Mm. As we be listening, Lord, help us to understand. Where we don't understand, teach us. Mm. Lord, help us to put into practice the things we will hear. We pray, Lord, that we we'll bring great testimonies. Lord, we will excel in Nigeria. We will excel in Australia. We will excel in Kenya. We will excel in Liberia. We will excel in Sierra Leone. Lord, it will be wickedness on our part if we don't pray for Sierra Leone, Liberia, and Guinea. Lord, this Ebola must stop. We'll give it between now and March. Let there be a full stop. Heal our people. Stop this scourge. If it is for the sin of our leaders, if it is for the sin of our people, if it for the sin of our churches, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on Liberia. Have mercy on Sierra Leone. Have mercy on Guinea. Lord, you took a lot of efforts to bring our ancestors from America to Liberia, from Europe to Sierra Leone, from the Caribbean and South America back to Sierra Leone. Lord, it was the church that established these nations. These nations are your people. These nations are your establishment. Lord, have mercy. We don't want a remnant. We want the whole nation healed. Bring help to us, O oh Lord. If we have made mistakes, let us learn on time. Lord, our hearts are here. We are here physically, but our hearts are at home. Lord, preserve our people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I don't know that I've stayed this long here. I just found out that by tomorrow and by Sunday, I will have uh, exhausted my time here. And I'm so glad. I want to tell you that you are wonderful people. I, I went outside now to take the pictures of the cars. You are small body, big engine, as I call the Lucy. You are small, but you can go far. You are small, but you can run fast. You are small, you can do great work. Don't see yourselves the way you saw yourself before now. Start to see yourselves the way God sees you. I'm so glad that I'm here. You've taken very good care of me. Um, I know you are passing through a lot of challenges, a lot of difficulties, a lot of work, but you have made sure you are here nearly every day. It is the Lord's doing. The Lord will reward you and bless you. I pray that this church will be a landmark in this country. I pray that it will be a reference point. Every negative thought people have had about Africa, you are going to erase it. You will make marks in this nation. And I pray for your children. Children, I pray that you will not be a source of disgrace. Center link is not your destiny. You will not remain in center link. You will not depend on people to eat. You will be productive. 
you will take care of people. In Jesus' name we pray. Hasna, why are you laughing like that? <laughs> is, it that is that the right way? Is that how to pronounce it? Praise the Lord. I want you to, when you have listened to, as you are here now, you know you have two attitudes. You have the attitude of the country you come from, and you have the attitude of the country you live in. Is that so? Yes. Um, he has this gift that I want you to, to crave. This gift of having scriptures at the tip of his fingers. As I was standing by the staircase, I, the Lord told me that he who does not have memory of scriptures is like a man who has a big gun without bullets. If you have a big gun and no bullets, you are like a man who does not know the scriptures. Because Jesus, when the devil tempted him, it was the scriptures he shot at him. So brethren, it is not enough for us to pray for you and for you to say amen. It is better you become a fighter yourself. Is that understood? But he who is not taught the word of God is like a man who has magazine full of bullets and rifles. He doesn't know how to shoot it. So that's why we are doing this combination here. We are doing this combination here. You will notice that I've been preaching from one passage for how many days now? Almost seven days. Almost seven days. We are taking only one scripture at a time. And then we are digesting it. We are looking at it. And so just imagine that you have this combination. You have a lot of scriptures in your hands. And then you take time to digest them. Imagine how fast you will grow. You know why I'm not shouting, Hey, bro, fire, turn down. All the prayers I can pray, this man can pray them for you and pray better. Is that okay? Yeah. When you take your wife to a restaurant to eat, it's not because she doesn't know how to cook. You just want to tell her, I love you. Oh, I told you I hardly like to stay in any country for long. This is one country that I have not been in a hurry to leave. God bless you. God bless Australia. May we contribute to this nation. When I was telling the, the, the immigration officer that I came here for capacity building, I did not know I was prophesying. And so that is what we have been doing. And God bless you. Amen. We are still looking at chapter 4 of 2 Kings. And we are looking at verse 7 alone now. When she told the man of God what had happened, he said to her, Now sell the olive oil and pay your debts, and you and your sons can live on what is left. We are still dwelling on sell the olive oil. So it is not enough to have the man of God prophesy upon you. It's not enough to have the man of God teach you. It is better for you when you get home, there are some roles you are going to play yourself. And that napkin. How many of you, how many times have I said that napkin here? That napkin that you need to use to wrap your head. It's not for everybody. That napkin is a sign. As a, has, has now. How did you know that I don't have wristwatch? <laughs> the woman bought a powerful wristwatch. <laughs> As I was, anytime I put it, I put it somewhere like a small shrine. Anytime I open my box, I will look at it. I say, how, does, how did this woman know that I don't have, I don't have wristwatch? And that God, I will always remember it and pray for you. God bless you. So, I wrote, before I came here, please write this down. Write this down. The poor look for money. While the rich look for ideas and opportunities and purpose. 
The poor look for money. The rich look for ideas and opportunities and purpose. Poor people look for money. What central link will give to you can never satisfy you in life. Because every money you sweat for has your blood on it. Has the label of your life on it. And any money you don't sweat for can never help you. Because it is the person who is giving it to you that is blessed. Did you hear me well? Yes. Eh? Any money you sweat for, because sweat comes from blood. Any money you sweat for has your blood on it. And if your blood is in it, your, your, need, your life is on it. Glory, I want you to capture this. We'll put it on YouTube. Any money you sweat for has your blood on it because sweat comes from blood. And your blood is your life. And your blood speaks. He said the blood of Abel speaketh vengeance. That of Jesus speaketh mercy. And so any money that your blood is not on, your label is not on it. That's why thief money you steal doesn't help you. Any money you get anyhow doesn't help you. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes. Center link money cannot make you rich. The person who gives you the money is the one who is more blessed than you. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Mama, does it make sense? Because the money somebody is giving to you is tax, is sweat. Praise the Lord. Now, I wrote here, please listen to this mystery. I wrote here, to be dedicated will make you grow in stature and wisdom. My pastor knows the passage, he will find it out for you later. When Jesus was dedicated in the temple, he grew in stature and wisdom. Is that okay? Huh? Eh? Jesus was not a small man. The reason he did not fight or push people or was meek, it was because of God in him. If not, Jesus was huge. He grew in stature and wisdom. You know why when he flogged them in the temple, they didn't hold him? He was bigger than them. Praise the Lord. Right, okay? To be dedicated will make you grow in stature and wisdom. But purpose and service to God makes you obtain favor with God and man. When Jesus was dedicated in the temple, the Bible says he grew in stature and wisdom. Is that right? Huh? But when he reached the age of 12, children, please look up. When he reached the age of 12, when he went to the temple and came back, the Bible says he grew in stature and wisdom and obtained favor with God and man. You can be dedicated in your business and make money. But until you find a purpose that you will use that money and your life to do in God's house, you will not obtain favor from God and man. The grace for dominion will not come. You people are not understanding me. The African church is used to shouting amen, amen, amen. You know, if I'm a typical Nigerian preacher, I would have said, uh, shout amen. Somebody say fire, thunder, fire brigade. Good. That is good for us. Because our people need to be awake when they come from farm. Our people need to hear. Our demons are so troublesome. They need to be frightened. <laughs> but sometimes, to, in the law school, you don't make noise. Am I right? Yeah. Bishop, That's right. where they are training lawyers, you have to push out, oh! Or where they are training medical students. In Australia, you don't make noise. But in our area, oh, wait, 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 wait. So now listen very carefully. I said to be dedicated will make you grow in stature and wisdom. You are coming to, I mean, we are in stature and wisdom. You come to church, we we'll make you an usher, we we'll make you women's leader, we we'll make you men's leader. You are just coming every day to this church and you are walking and you are walking. It will make you grow. But why are you walking? Why are you 
here in Australia. I am here because I want to raise one million Africans like me. So if there's no white person in this church, I don't care. In fact, when I was coming, I was wondering what I'm coming to do here. Do white people need my message? Coincidentally, you are here. And so, that is my purpose of coming. And immediately, you find a purpose. When Jesus, you will find the passage out for them later and read it for them. In Luke, I think chapter 2 from verse 41, 42 down, it said when Jesus, when the Jesus' mother found him, he said, why are you looking for me? Don't you know I should be about my father's business? Luke 2, 49. Yes. The Bible says he grew in stature and wisdom and obtained favor from God and man. Parasites can grow. Worm in your belly can grow from feeding on you. But it has no favor. Because the day you are angry, you will take worm expeller and you will push him out. Am I right? Yes, that. Mosquitoes can suck blood and grow. But when you get angry and you use insecticide to kill them, they will die. Are we still together here? Yes, that is. When you find purpose and service in the house of God, it is then you receive grace. You receive um, fine favor with God and with man. And I wrote here, if Jesus needed it, you will need it. Now, I'm going to another part before we, another part that will culminate on what I'm going to say now. Because that business is not just for making money. Write this down. Write this down. For every man you meet who will give you money, do the following ends in his life. Number one, make a mark. Number two, Leave a memory. Number three, cause him to have a meaning from what you are doing to him. Is it too high for you? We went to a re an eatery to eat, a restaurant. Um, what's the name of the place again? Mama, what's the name of the place again? Where we went to eat? Uh, um, Cafe, Premium. Cafe Premium. She said, that there are several cafe premiums in this city. But this one, there is a way that it is unique. Mm. Somebody say Mark. Mark. You understand? When somebody leaves you, let the person think about you. Leave something in the mind of the person that is positive, that the person will always think about you, and want to relate with you, want to come back. Women always leave a memory in the mind of your husband, so that he will not commit adultery. Give him a food, a meal that you want to enjoy. When you learn how to not tie as a woman, when you finish knotting the tie of your husband, give him a warm kiss before he goes to work. Even if he is carrying heavy load, that kiss will energize him. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. My name, you are blessed. So true. Anytime you are flying, the airline wants you to come back. Anytime your husband is going to Jerusalem, make sure that he wants to come back to Jerusalem. <laughs> now, listen to me. Listen to me. If your life cannot make your church... <laughs> and I ask now, why are you talking about Jerusalem again? Don't talk like that. <laughs> it's only for pastors to talk like that. <laughs> if your life cannot make your church, business, country, our family grows spiritually, financially, intellectually, and otherwise, you are not growing. But most importantly, you are not glowing. Growing. And we are going to advance level now. If your life cannot make your church, church, business, family, or country grow spiritually, Financially, intellectually, and otherwise, you are not growing yourself. But most importantly, you are not glowing. Glowing is radiating the luminance, the light of God, the brightness of God, and the sweetness of God. I wrote here, you are the mirror of God. 
Let your light shine that the world may see. Now, let's go to the lesson of today. I hope you wrote those things down. I hope you will reflect on them. If you must sell and you must do business and you must succeed in, it and in any other thing, you need the, other, the following P's. How many P's did we study yesterday? Two. Let's take maybe two or three today. P number three, preparation. Somebody say preparation. preparation. Say it again. Preparation. How many of you know Rockefeller Foundation? Rockefeller. They built universities, gave scholarship. Their family is so rich that there is a fund they kept aside now that no person should touch it until the fourth generation, 120, 160 years from now. From then, they have a money, some money they kept aside that no person should touch it until 160 years, their descendants. They have Exxon Mobil. They started, start, started as Standard Oil. This Exxon Mobil, it started from their family business. He wrote here that success in business requires training and discipline and hard work. But if you are not frightened by these things, the opportunities are just great today as they, as they were ever. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 15 says, Study to show yourself approved. A workman that needs not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. William Taylor, the author of that book that I said is, was written in 1876, said that providential chances may lift one into a position of honor. That is miracle, love can lead put you into a position of honor and trust, or hardship and trial, wholly unanticipated, and the fact should become a factor in the preparation of a life work. That means even if you are expecting a miracle, prepare. I wrote here, when preparation for business needs opportunity, it brings wealth. Don't just run into any business because you've heard Dr. Apoki preach. You must study that business. You must go and ask those who have done that business before how they have done it, the opportunities and the challenges that are there. Many businesses fail because people don't take precautions. The hardship you pass through in life is preparing you for your future. The number of hours you are doing now is preparing you to spend such hours in your own business. Because the Bible says, if you cannot do another man's business well, how can you do your own? It says, who will even give you your own? And so, hardship prepares you for opportunity. I grew up roasting fish, drying fish at night, roasting cow skin at night. It has prepared me to stay awake and read and write. Most of the books I have written, I wrote, I wrote them at night. It prepared me that when I went to medical school and I didn't have books to read, I could stay and people will read till 12 o'clock, I will borrow their books and read till morning. When I read till morning, I will still pass. Every business must have a philosophy. Somebody say philosophy. This is how I want to do my business. This is how this church should be. This is how my family is. My family philosophy is that we are in this together. We are in this not for any other person. Hardly do we complain about each other to any person. We try as much as possible to bear our pains. Our philosophy of marriage is the pepper soup philosophy. How many of you know pepper soup? When you are eating pepper soup, it will make... Ah, yeah. Ooh. When you eat pepper soup, it has to be hot for it to be sweet. When you are eating pepper soup, you will sneeze. <laughs> when you are eating pepper soup, tears will come from your eyes. There are some times when you say tear in marriage, you will wonder how you manage you marry this as yourself. It is all part of the pepper soup philosophy for marriage. The marriage you are into, you are the one who cooks the pepper soup, drink it. Every business has its own challenges. The long trailer driver that brings bananas from the tropics of Australia to you here in, in uh, Adelaide, South Australia, travels long distances. The man who makes milk cow to produce milk for you, you don't know the challenges he's passing through. The fish you eat, you don't know how much effort it takes to go into sea. 
So every business must have a philosophy. One of the philosophies that, okay, let me talk, talk to you what Mrs. Wesley told her son Samuel, Samuel Wesley in 1709. He said, I will advise you as much as possible to throw your business into a certain method, by which means you will learn to improve every precious moment and find an unspeakable facility in the performance of your respectable duties. In all things, act upon principle. There's no reason why I should sleep with another woman. No reason. No matter what she has. Because I consider it an insult for me to pull my pants for you. Who are you? It's an insult. You don't listen to them. You don't watch them. I don't like begging. It does not produce results for me. Instead, I like walking. In my house, we don't borrow clothes to wear. If the thing is not there, we will manage until it is there. Am I talking to somebody else? We don't imitate people. If there's no money for, to buy goods for Christmas, we eat what we have. Am I talking to somebody else? We have a philosophy. My wife is the better manager. If money enters my hand, it will finish just now. So my wife manages. In my, in my marriage, you don't come to my house and, uh, and report my wife to me that thinking that I will punish her or I will question her. Rather, I will discuss with her. Because if because of you, you don't come into my marriage and bring quarrel between my wife and myself. Because I can't marry you. You have your own marriage at home. Why will you come and spoil my own? And we have an unlimited capacity to forgive each other. Unlimited. Unlimited capacity. I'm sure, because I'm very troublesome, I'm sure my wife has forgiven me in advance. She has forgiven me up to 2016. And you are still in Am I talking to somebody? Yes, daddy. Yes, daddy. I don't think she waits for me. No, she knows now. She just forgives me in advance. I know you will misbehave one day. I know you will shout. Because I, I, I shout. I'm not as gentle as this. Please don't be deceived. I'm a normal human being. So she forgives me in advance. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. William Fair wrote that tact and push without principle are dangerous possessions. You have enough energy. You have enough, enough anointing. You, then you have the skill to do, but you don't have principle of life. I, can have, I, I will not come to Australia without him. If somebody is inviting me, I will tell him, pass through him. Most of you that have come to meet me, can I see you? I say, meet your pastor. Not so. I will not leave you here and start phoning you from Nigeria. It's not, it's not worth it. Who are you? That this man brought me in contact with you. I will now pass behind and be praying for you. For what reason? Have I finished? Have I finished praying for my family? Yes, Pastor Fresh. Most people cannot be trusted because they don't have principles. Tact and push. Tact and push without principle are dangerous possessions. I will leave William Boy, the man that made the airplane. There are key principles that every successful businessman, pastor, housewife, children, students must put into, into practice if they are to do well. Number one, integrity. If people can't trust you, they can't give you their money. They can't buy from you. They can't marry you. They can't trust you. They can't give you anything. Integrity. Let your word be your bond. If people find out that you are reliable, they will always patronize you. I took one picture. Let me leave that one. The next thing is punctuality. Somebody say punctuality. There is a, a, a CD there, audio CD. Uh, passion. Passion. Mary Magdalene woke up early in the 
morning. Africans have a way of going late. This African time. That's why we are back home. The white man tells you 7 30. It's 7 30. You must learn to be punctual. One day I missed my flight by five minutes. The airline refused to carry me. He said, The next philosophy, open your shop on time. Don't say, my baby, my this. Wake up early. As a Sunday school teacher, he knows. I had a hospital in Abba. I had two clinics in another state. 7.30, I am in the church. My bishop doesn't come there. 7 o'clock, 7.30, I'm in the church. I will see my patients first before going to my Sunday school. But I don't go late. On Friday, I ironed my clothes. All the clothes I'm wearing here, and I've not ironed any cloth here. That right? I've ironed them down. I have planned how I will wear them. Do everything. On Saturday morning, I wake up very early. I start to help my wife to do some things. I, when she's looking for her shoe, I placed it there. The, the greatest mistake you can make as a pastor or as a husband is if your wife is going somewhere with you. You can sit in the car and hunt. Pam, pam, pam. You will never go on time. <laughs> if, I give them two hours notice. Yes. Tell them if you are going by one, tell them you are going by eleven. <laughs> <laughs> if not, you will always quarrel in your family. I tell them. If you want to take your wife for shopping and she tells you she wants to buy only pepper chilies. <laughs> Or oh, she wants to buy bananas only. She will use the word only. Make sure you carry a book. Yes, to read for at least one hour. She will not spend only the 10 minutes. If you must marry well, this ring you wear as a wedding ring is more than handcuffs. It's more than handcuffs. They will enter the market. Banana is here, they will, they will pick banana, they will look at it, they will make it like this. Then they will look for where it is one cent less than where it is here. They don't know you are waiting. But why will I get angry? It's my money she's saving now. Am I talking to somebody? If it is in Africa, if your wife tells you she is going to shop for cooking or shop for a month, for the month, please carry a Dex Bible with chain reference. Prepare the messages you want to prepare for six months alone. Because she will spend up to four hours. And when she's coming, she will carry so many things. Honey, please come and help me. Then when she will reach the car, she will ask you, are you angry? Oh God, that's where, that's where we must commit sin. No, I am not angry. I'm not, I'm not angry. <laughs> no, I'm not angry. Boy, I was angry. So like, the fear of madame is the beginning of peace in the home. The fear of madame. It's the beginning of peace at home. <laughs> that brings me to another P. Somebody say P. Somebody say politeness. Okay, no, let me leave politeness. Let's come to patience. Somebody say patience. Say it again. Those of you who take care of um, aged people, you know you have to be patient with them. Um... Uh, I want to go. To, I want to use the restroom. She, she to get up from the bed alone is. <laughs> I have an old mother-in-law I'm taking care of. I put catheter for her. I do a lot of things. I wash her clothes. I do a lot of things. The children can't. You know, I have to. As she's getting up, I'm greeting her. Greeting her. I'm encouraging her. Oh, you have tried. You know, if you are not patient with your customers. You can't make business. It's, particularly in Africa. It's not here when uh, we don't do that here. We don't do that here. Okay, do that. It's because somebody's employing you. In Africa, the, the old woman will come. Uh, my daughter, how much is this tomatoes? You will say 30 CDs or 30 Liberty. She will say, uh, won't you sell for 25? As you ask, okay, pay. No, what of ten? What of five? 
Okay. Do you have the one from uh, Eldoret? This ones they look from a seed, they are from uh, Nyasa. If you wanted the ones from Eldoret, why didn't you tell me the ones from Eldoret you wanted since? Am I talking to somebody? Yes. If you are not patient, this, these people took a lot of efforts to work this money. If you want to date a girl, you want to marry a girl, don't just go there like the way I went. I was very fortunate. A young man was talking to, said that uh, he wanted uh, to, to marry a girl, but the girl is not giving him attention. And he loved the girl so much. Then they met a native doctor. The native doctor said, go and bring the hair of a mad woman. That this girl, if you bring the hair of a mad woman, this girl will marry you. So the mad man, the man went to the mad woman. First gave uh, the mad woman bread. Gave the mad woman fish. Gave the woman, mad woman more uh, Coca-Cola. Sat near the mad woman. Brought out uh, money, gave to the mad woman. They said, mad, mad woman, what is happening to your hair? Your hair is so long. The mad woman put the hair down. Oh, your hair. Oh, your hair. Your hair. Your hair. Why don't you even wash your hair? In the process, she, he cut some and took back. Met the native doctor. He said, see your, see your, the hair of the mad woman. The native doctor said, I won't do any medicine for you. Go and be patient with that girl. Treat her the way you treated the mad woman. She will marry you. A woman in Nigeria was, was the, the husband was always slapping her. She went and met a native doctor. He said, my husband wants to remove all my teeth. Only few are remaining now. All others are shaking. He said, okay, I will do one medicine for you. He said, just go outside, I will prepare the medicine. The man took charcoal, tied red cloth over it, white cloth over it, blue cloth over it gave the size of the woman's mouth and tied it like that and gave it to her. He said, give me one, one, one fowl. Give him fowl. He said, if your husband is talking, run into the room. Don't let him see this medicine. Put it inside your mouth. <laughs> and close your mouth. So the man came from work again with very hot temper. I will kill you today, you stupid girl. You poor man's daughter. You, you don't know how to cook. The woman just ran. He was standing like standard bank. <laughs> that day the man didn't slap. Next day the man didn't slap. Third day the man didn't slap. The man woman ran back to the native doctor. He said, that your medicine worked. <laughs> Did the medicine work? No. It was that napkin. He said, soft answer turns away rough. Tell the neighbor, shine your eye. Shine your eye. Tell the neighbor, use your brain. Use your brain. Tell the neighbor, mumu time don't pass. Mumu time don't pass. <laughs> patience. Somebody say patience. The next thing is regularity. Somebody say regularity. People should be able to plan ahead with you. They know that by so time you'll be there. By so time you will close. You can. You must produce this. Don't let them come and be disappointed. When your, I said, I wrote here, when your services are regular, people can plan ahead with you in mind. They can put you in their budget. When your services are irregular, no matter how good you are, people will drift somewhere else. The next thing is placing people first before pricing. Many Nigerian entrepreneurs are primarily interested in profit before relationship. If you cultivate a relationship with your customers, they will advertise you and defend you. They are able to is diligence. Somebody say diligence. diligence. Say it again. Diligence. If you must work with rich people and get money from them, you must pay attention to details. Before I came back from preaching, my towels had been changed as if I was living in a hotel. How did this woman know that she needs to change these towels? In fact, the bed, the way the bed was dressed before I came, 
they put red bed, red bed spread, all of them have heart, heart, heart. That means we love you, we love you, we love you. And the blood, the, the, the bed was red. I said, this is the blood of Jesus. You see the adulteress that wanted to seduce a, a young man. Proverbs chapter 5 or 7, you know it. Now. Proverbs. The, the adulteress. adulteress. He said, the, the woman waited at, he waited somewhere. She said, my husband has traveled. Somebody said, timing. timing. So, eh? Timing. Somebody said, planning. planning. He said, I have perfumed my bed with aloes and maya. He said, this, this, this. She was paying attention. She knows what the person will need. When you are a mechanic and you are repairing vehicles for women, know the needs of women. Women don't like reverse. To reverse the car is very difficult for women. So when women come to your mechanic workshop, make sure that you take the car outside and use it to face the direction she wants to go. Women don't like adjusting car seat. So if you adjusted her car seat, mark where you took it from. Arrange it back to where it was. Women don't like grease on their cars because washing cars is difficult for them. They don't like stretching their body over the car. If you walk a car for a woman, make sure you clean where you put your dirty fingers. And don't sit on a woman's seat with your dirty ass. Put something on it before you sit down. And then listen to this. Women, if a woman gives you money to buy something for him, return her change. <laughs> woman money, no, they drop. No matter how rich a woman is, her small money, she will keep it. That's why women hide money in Africa in very dangerous places, inside breast. Before you collect the money from the Brazil, you either commit adultery. <laughs> when you're dealing with a woman, don't ever tell her a lie. Immediately you lie to a woman. She has every other thing you are saying is lie. She's just tolerating you. Am I talking to somebody? Pay attention to details. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I forgot something about patience. Uh, Glory, are you with me? I forgot something about patience. I don't know whether it happens here. When you phone a woman in Africa, she will receive at least four missed calls before she will answer the phone. The phone is in the bag. She will be looking for it. Hey, where is this phone now? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it doesn't happen to anyone here. You are very civilized. <laughs> <laughs> It happened to us too. Yeah, yes. They are always looking for where is this thing? Glory, did you see this? Mama, sorry, it's not you I'm talking about. I, I forgot to call my children. Oh, that's my wife. <laughs> where, where is this guy? Where did I put this key just now? But if they want to hide something there and they don't want you to see it, they will hide it and they will remember it. She went and opened it, you know, it was hard for her because there's no key. So she, I instructed that she opened it. So I didn't know while I was coming back, she was waiting for me to celebrate what she has achieved. You know? So I came back and she said, have you not had, you do not remember the door locked? I said, is that, okay, no problem. I, did I not tell you what to do about it? So I, I just pushed her away and went to do another thing. That is not what she did. She knew I was going to take my bath. She ran and locked the door. <laughs> imagine, imagine, imagine a woman has gone to the salon to do her hair for you. What are they dressing for? It's you. When a woman dresses, as she is, um, when a woman dresses, I, I watch them. If they are passing me where there is a car glass, they will look at themselves. <laughs> It doesn't happen here, it's only there. It doesn't happen to you, we are very spiritual. Then the woman has gone to do her hair. Spent so much energy staying under the dryer. You know what it takes to stay under the dryer. Then she comes, you are watching Manchester United and Chelsea. She just passed. You know what they will do? She will come back again and pass in front of you. If you are not paying attention, she will kick something for that. Stupid man, tell her, oh honey, awesome. That's, that's what I learned here now. Awesome. 
Somebody. Women are in the The next thing is politeness. Somebody say politeness. Another P. Major P. This is what I learned here. These children, you don't shout at the many are here. Awesome. Oh, that's nice. Oh, you flush the toilet. Oh, great. That's wonderful. Hey, flush your toilet. <laughs> oh, you finished your food. Oh, nice. Finish your food. <laughs> Even if they don't like you. Even if the people here don't like you. They will just smile. Thank you. The man serving us food. The owner of the restaurant serving black man food. No, you're welcome. I hope you had a nice time. <laughs> if you treat men like trash, you can't get their cash. If you treat men like royalty, you get their loyalty. People want to be treated with dignity. Marvin Gaye, a secular musician, said, We are all sensitive people. Say, We are all sensitive people. People want to be spoken to with the language of royalty. Oh, my dear, welcome. Oh, my prince, how are you? Am I talking to somebody? I called my eldest son. His birthday is tomorrow. I said, uh, uh, the prince of the Apoki kingdom, handsome boy, Toki, I'm wishing you happy birthday in advance because his voice will have listed. When you praise people, you raise people. The money you want to get from your customer took a lot of effort. To get, so you must. They must not feel you want to get it anyhow. You are not. A, we are not in a communist nation. We have a lot of rough talking people in Africa. Women that talk to us that's in here. Husbands that talk to men in here. And wives in here. Please, can we change? The next thing is prudence. You must manage your time. Men, materials, and moments very well. It will precipitate worlds. Let me share you a story, then we will pray. We will preach the other ones by the grace of God if God allows us to come to Australia. Listen. Listen. Two stories, they are going to pray. Look up, please. Gloria, you follow me? One woman in, in one of our branches went and poured hot water. On another woman who was committing adultery with the husband. You know you have adulteress. Somebody say adulteress. adulteress. Say it again. Adulteress. An adulteress is the one committing adultery with the husband, with another person's husband. You have adulterer. Somebody say adulterer. Adulteress. An adulterer is the one committing adultery, the man committing adultery with the woman. Not so. I manufacture my own English. We also have adultery. Adultery is the woman whose husband is committing adultery. You are not innocent. What has the other woman got that you don't have? You must always see your husband as a customer. <laughs> they are laughing. See your husband as a project. See your husband as a client. Am I talking to somebody? Treat, treat your children like ambassadors. Yesterday I went with Kay to her family burial ground. For every person that was buried there, she had a good memory. When we got there, her eyes lighting up. I've never seen her like that before. Always leave memories in the minds of your children. The buildings will grow old. The cars will grow old. It is what you leave in their minds that they will treasure. So this woman went and poured hot water on uh, the other woman's face. Thank God he didn't peel the face. And then they brought the case to our bishop to handle. Then they asked the, the adultery to narrate her case. She said, Bishop, imagine this woman here, as beautiful as she is. She will not marry her own husband. It's my own husband. She wants to steal. In Nigeria, we call her uh, Thief Ole. She wants to steal my husband. Oh, only husband. <laughs> then they told adulteress, adulteress, 
present your case. Adulteress said, Bishop, you are a man of God. I want you to judge this case with your godly mind and with your church mind. He said, you see this man here? This man does not like argument. This man does not like too much talking. He said, but this is wife. Has a habit. Anytime the man is talking, before she says one, she will say seven. Before she says two, she will say twenty. And so when the man comes, when the woman troubles her with argumentation, remember the Bible says it is better to live in the wilderness. Go to the bush, not park. Go and live with kangaroos, snakes, bad spiders, than to live in the same house with a talkative, argumentative, contentious woman. I will do this. No, you can't do this yet. Don't argue with your customers. Don't, argue, don't treat people as if you are the only person alive. Who are you? Only one sickness, you are dead. The world will continue without you. My archbishop died without the church will close. The next convention, there were more people. Who are you? What do you think you are? I said, so when this woman, this man is angry, he will go and drink. So when he drinks and comes back, the wife will disgrace her in the compound. So, so he will now run to me. When he runs to me, he will vomit. I will wash the vomit. When I wash the vomit, I will bath him and give him food to eat. I will tell him, please go back to your wife. I don't want people to say I am stealing somebody's husband. So she will, he will tell me. I, please leave me here. I don't want to go back to that record store. I mean that radio station. Bishop, judge this case with your church mind. Am I the one that stole somebody's husband or they drove husband to my hand? Hallelujah. <laughs> Mama, judge this case with your church mind. <laughs> Was it the woman that stole husband or they drove husband to her ch church mind? Glory, let me ask Kenya. <laughs> My friend from Kenya. <laughs> is it the woman that stole, is it the adultery that stole husband? Or, I mean, adulteress that stole husband? Or adultery drove husband into the hand of adultery? Uh, she was, the husband was driven away. Was driven away. Then ask Mama, Mama has no experience that. <laughs> Mama from Liberia. Are you, are you enjoying the message? Is it making sense? Mama, now the man, now the, now the adulteress, nine thief husband, or the drive husband, go meet her. Oh my God. Uh, it is a whole story if I can um, calculate in my mind. What really was going on? This man that went to this one house was screaming away by his wife because of the. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, yes. Don't drive. You, you don't always exercise dominion by oppressing people. You exercise dominion by loving people. You exercise dominion. You exercise dominion. By treating people like kings. Am I talking to somebody? Sure. Asna has a, ask a question. Yeah, that's a question that I want to ask on that same. That same story. You people used to look at wristwatches a lot. I want to pray now. Because the pastor is already looking at wristwatches, signaling me. <laughs> okay. Sometimes you meet all those uh, men that when they come again, like, you know. At least with the women, we need a little bit of attention as well. But when you come, the husband can't give you attention. And what do you have to do? You have to create something to get more attention. <laughs> yeah. So maybe that's what that lady was trying to do, to create more things to get attention from the husband. <laughs> Men are naturally aggressive. There's a hormone in men called testosterone that is responsible for beards, for muscles. Because of the natural aggression in men, some men who fear God, when they see aggression, 
de tous les ways. Instead of fighting, because they want to go to heaven, they pull away. Because you can't really beat a woman, no matter how strong you are. I say, sorry, sir, sorry, man. Come now, come. As huge as my sister is, if I, I want to beat her, you can't beat a woman. Her mouth will beat you. <laughs> if I slap her, oh, she will say, "Are you touching me like that?" Yeah, the first thing they do is that they will tear your shirt. The next thing is that they will scratch your face. Meanwhile, they're giving you tribal marks like a Yoruba man. <laughs> and then before you know it, she will tell you something that will kill your head. Last time, that man beat you in the beach. Why did you fight with him? It's only my body that you, it's only in my place that you have power. Look at you. A small boy used you to hit the floor last time in the, in the school. You couldn't do anything. Woo! Lazy man. You will just kill yourself. <laughs> Please sit down. So the best thing is to avoid the trouble. Peace is not the absence of trouble. Peace is the ability to manage it. So ask now. Don't, it's not the oh, that attracts the attention. Men, you should also know. When a woman is talking with them, she's banging the door. Please. If she's transferring what she's supposed to do to you or to the door. So when a woman talks, boom. What's, what's wrong? Like if I call my wife, uh, how are you? I am fine, no. She's happy. If I call her, how are you? I am fine. She's not happy. If I don't hear the oh. So I called her one time when I was here. How are you? I am fine. She's not happy that I left her. She's not happy that I left her with a fracture in her hand. She's not happy that I scraped money and came here. I don't understand that. She's not happy that I left when school just resumed. I know the vehicles broke down now. They, 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 are working. they worked on two engines as I'm here now. Two big engines. Buses. She's under stress. I know that. So as I'm going, I need to compensate her. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, eh? As I'm going, I first bribe her with one gift. When I bribe her with one gift, I bring another one like that. You must know how to win people. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, sir. Win your customers. Win your neighbors to church. Don't drive them away. God bless you. Pastor, you believe this too.